So in a previous video, I showed the Tamara Roy build, where she basically tanked a bunch of things on chapter 23, which is definitely not an easy chapter with enemies that have really good stats and really good damage. Now let's compare her to another unit. The point of this video is objective proof and benchmarking. So I don't care what people say if they can't prove it. If they have a good argument that's logical that I can follow the steps, uh, but like that's meaningful, that's valuable. But if someone just makes like claims like, oh, this unit can do this thing really well without proof, well, let's go find us some proof. All right, so I do hear that units like Diamonts can tank very well, like main tank very well. And to some degree, this is true. However, he isn't the fastest unit, even with speed plus five. And I already showed the results of Tamara killing all of these in her opening turn and having really good hit rates on these fast high avoid enemies. Now let's see if Diamant Tank can do a similar thing. Now he can 1 to 2 range on Tomahawk here, but he really can't because he'll get broken by the sword, so we have to switch him to Ragnall. And that's fine, like, you know, if your tank isn't a general, it can get broken, that's expected. So we'll switch him to Ragnall. He's 30 speed, which is not fast enough to double most of these. He can double this one. He can't double any of these other enemies. And in fact, this will double him. Or, I'm sorry, this one will double him. All right, so let's see what he can do. This is this is a one-to-one -one comparison of equally invested in units that are the same level. They both have the same like high level of SP cost passives. Look at his accuracy, 48 accuracy. He's not very accurate, his, his dex is low. So when I'm factoring in how good a unit is, I don't care about what their personality is, what they look like, whatever. I only care about how consistent and reliable they are. And right now, him using Ike in this way is not very consistent or reliable, and it's not a good showing for him. He does get a crit here. The Wrath gets up, you know, so he was able to get a crit. Uh, I already knew the crit was going to happen because I tested this out earlier. But this, this was his result, right? Now, this is him on Ike, and look at how much health he has, also. So this is him on Ike. Now, Ragnall does give defense plus 5. But this is the result he was able to get, and his hit rates are quite poor. He missed both of the sword enemies. He put one of these at half, and he just happened to create another one. This is why I rate Tamara high in my videos, typically, because she can take, like, no damage and sandstorm into kills. And also, like, a lot of her builds enable her to kill pretty effectively. Uh, now this, attacking in this way, I don't double this guy, but I still hit a 20. Uh, I could sandstorm here, who knows. I don't. You're not going to double griffins. Pretty much no builds of that serious uh, speed help will double griffins. So, like, she's, like, one of the faster units. She's even faster than Hortensia, who's also speed plus 3. Uh, her Byleth can get her up, but she's, like, one of the fastest units on my team, next to Alir and Fogato. But you would need to do like some kind of serious speed fixing. But the point is, this tank build is simply less effective than the Tamara Roy build I used in a previous video. And it's, it puts in less work, he takes more damage. He also, he got half of the talismans and Draco shields. I think there's like two to three talismans, two to three Draco shields. Whatever it is, he got half and she got half. And these are the stats they have. He has speed plus five, which is 2k. She has speed plus five, which is 2k. She has Resolve Plus, which is 2k. Or, I'm sorry, 3k. Or no, I think it is 2k. I think Base Resolve is 1k. It's either 2 or 3k, but he also has Axe Power 3, which is 3k. Uh, he has multiple weapons. He has uh, a Forge and Grave. He has a huge Forge. He has a Tomahawk. He has, like, Elixirs for tanking, you know, for using Elixirs. And this is just the results he puts out. So when I evaluate units, I am constantly thinking back to all the different builds I ran, who uses the resources the best? So like Marin Ike tank would be at similar health right now, but she would have put more damage on these and probably even doubled some of these. Now doubling these guys, I don't expect anything to double these. Unless you're running some kind of like super instruct or running DLC to get Rally Spectrum, I really don't expect units to double Swordmasters or like enemy Wolf Knights. They're just insanely fast, and even if you're on a Wolf Knight, at best you're like a few points of speed higher than them. The only way to double them realistically is to have like uh, a Covert using Byleth to instruct speed, 
uh, a unit on Lin and speed plus five, <laughs> or a unit with speed taker, and they've gotten kills. So like that's really the only way to double those. There's like you need like serious external forces to drastically scale up your speed. Uh, but if you're on Tamara, you can just tank these and be fine. And then if you roll a sandstorm, even though you don't double them, your 20 damage becomes like 50 damage or 40 damage. And being able to enemy phase, you know, 10 things at a time and trigger these sandstorms it's just like free extra crits now when tamara is on ike she also can crit so her crit rate goes up as her health goes down and she can crit sandstorm which will one shot any enemy she hits and she gets like 30 crit 30 percent chance of sandstorm and then when you double an enemy phase you're dealing huge damage so i know there's some people who are convinced i just have like a tamara bias but the tankiness of the unit drastically outperforms other units tankiness and on average too like if you take like a general tank like louis or jade their speed is low so they always get doubled some of sometimes i think their luck is low i think louis and jade have kind of like average or low luck that does matter for getting crit but for getting hit by mages generals have a hard time dealing with mages so like jade louis bunet these units they can run Ike, you know, they'll take half damage, but they always get hit twice and their res is terrible. So when mages attack them, like if this mage were to attack them, 48 magic, doubling, even when you take half damage, could easily be a kill. So getting doubled by mages is such a huge weakness of generals. Now they don't get broken, but they can still get fractured, which does happen a lot in endgame. There are a lot of fractures sitting around on some uh, divine, or I'm sorry, some normal paralogs, not divine paralogs. Uh, but this is like, like, I evaluate units in the game. I don't evaluate them with spreadsheets. I don't evaluate them by going to Oife bots and asking it what the stats look like and then ignoring every other aspect of how you get that build online, when that build becomes online, how good it is compared to other things. So, like, one of the best tanks in the game is Tamara. Like, she legitimately is really good. There's very few units who can tank as well as her. Now, there are some units who kind of can tank as well as her, or not as well as her, close to as well as she can tank, but she ultimately has a fast class that can trigger a huge damage increase for free at all times while also being able to deal good base damage. And very few things can do that. Uh, so you could, for example, make Ivy like an Ike tank. This would be an interesting different build. Uh, but the problem immediately is when you run into air effectiveness. So you run into archers, even if she has high defense, the damage can be insane, but you could reasonably run Ivy as an Ike tank. However, she's slow, so now she needs speed fixed. So she needs like speed plus five. Here's her on speed plus five. Here's Ivy, an overleveled Ivy on speed plus five. She's 27 speed. She is barely doubling the slowest enemies right now. Uh, so like these axe enemies, she'll double, she'll double this. But without speed plus five, she's doubling nothing. So she's basically forced to run speed plus five, which is fine. In this case, I also have her on speed taker, so she doubles consistently. But Ivy as a main tank is questionable because there's so many air effectiveness things that will hit you and kill you very quickly. Like this damage scaling on them can be quite brutal. So that can be an issue. Uh, the other issue is her physical defense isn't as high as like a main tank. So she gets like 20, you know, physical defense. Most enemies attack with physical. So most of what you're dealing with the game are big physical attacks. So if she gets hit by like these 71s, now it's possible she kills these before they hit her. But if she if one of if she doesn't have enough damage and one of these hits, she's dead for sure. And you know, even these little things like these like 46s and 40s, like in in a in the like the best case scenario, she could get to maybe 35 defense by endgame, which is good. Like that is high. Uh, but that's not enough to sustain getting hit by 40s and 50s every turn plus like the you know the chain attacks and stuff like that so she could potentially be a really good main tank but she's quite slow and also her accuracy is bad like look at her hit right now when she doesn't have a hit fixing engraving her accuracy is low so she misses a lot of attacks that's one unique thing about tamara also is that she has high dex from just good dex growth so she's just naturally more accurate and it also gives her more crits so it plays into her kit like right now she's 166 hit on a javelin plus four and on fencilar with a hit engraving and like both of these have hit engraving she can't miss on pretty much either of these and then just using uh Stieglin, she's 171 hits 
using these other weapons. She's like 150 at the lowest, 170 on average. So hitting things is important, tanking things is important, dealing bonus damage when you wouldn't kill anyways is important. So like it's it's clear that even if Diamant attacks with his best weapons here, like he tomahawks, he's not, he could one round this on enemy phase, but these would break him. So I had to switch off of it. Uh, but look at his hit rates on these sword masters. And also he doesn't double them. So like this is not the best. However, uh, his build is basically a crit build. So he would go for a killer axe here. Uh, so he has pretty good hit. Now his crit is basically at max. So it's not 100%. His hit is good on this weapon because it has a hit engraving. You know, Erica increases hit. But 70% chance to crit, that's not a guaranteed kill either. So there's a lot of arguments of, you know, certain units being RNG, like, oh, Tamara Sandstorm is RNG. Uh, but even a build like this is relying on RNG because it's not a hundred it's not guaranteed, right? But it's also dangerous to run Ike. Or I'm sorry, to run uh, this engraving because it gives you plus 20 incoming crit which means it also makes him easier to hit. So he has minus 20 avoid, so his avoid is zero, and his dodge, let's look at his dodge. His dodge is zero, so any enemy with any kind of crit rate can crit him. So this enemy has 18 crit. <laughs> so this enemy has an 18% chance to crit him right now. That's not good. That is not good at all. Uh, now there are other crit engravings, but they all reduce damage. And this is the only one that both increases crit and hit while not killing damage, which he doesn't have he has above average damage in some respects, but not high damage. So like, this is how I evaluate units, right? Like I actually test them, I run them through entire playthroughs, I give them all the resources they should get, and I compare them to previous builds. Uh, like this build is basically just worse than Marin tank. And especially in these late game chapters, like it's falling apart. Like he can't even tank four enemies without taking serious damage on. And he's not doubling most, he only doubles the one out of four slow enemies here. And these enemies he will double, so as we kill these, he could double these, then we phase those a little bit better. Uh, these ones he does not double. So you have to be mindful of that. But ultimately, when I evaluate these builds, it's coming from a place of where the rubber meets the road. And I think when some people discuss things, they either aren't aware of the power of other builds and just assume that their builds are on par with them without stress testing them, or they're operating in this mindset of like, oh, well, Oifebot says that, you know, at the same level, these stats are similar, but that's not the whole thing, right? Like you have to take everything into account, every single thing, like how accurate is this unit? Uh, what's its defense? What's its res? What's its health? What's its speed? What's its strength? Uh, when you get the unit, what emblems are they good on? What passives can they run? What emblems can they run? How good are other units on the same emblem? And does this unit use this emblem the best? Like these are all things that factor in to when I rate these units on these emblems. So for example, if I gave Diamant Roy, he's not gonna use it as well as Tamara, even if you give them both all of this, the uh, talismans and Draco shields, which is usually what I do for tanks. He's not gonna be as good on it. He's slower than her. He's like, here, let's look at his bit. Let's look at his speed. So his speed right now is 26 at base, right? Uh, I did not use a speed wing on her, her speed right now is 30. She is plus four to five speed over him. That's the equivalent of having speed plus five on top of a, you know, like over a unit at all times. She is substantially faster than him. It's not even close. This also contributes to avoid, meaning that she's harder to hit. So when she equips certain weapons, she gets to like 88 avoid on this Marth engraved Fensilar, and on this Javelin, she's 81 avoid. All right, let's look at Let's go, let's pulse back and see what his avoid is. Like obviously he's Ike engaged, so it's, it removes avoid, but let's see what his avoid is. 57 avoid on Tomahawk, uh, 61 avoid on Nawatan, 41 avoid on Killer Axe. And then for her, 81 avoid, 88 avoid, 75 avoid on a heavy weapon. On the swords, she's 80 avoid on all of them. Uh, that does matter. When you're tanking, especially if you're not using Ike, uh, so like Roy is a non-Ike tank, so avoid matters, right? So on a non-Ike tank, she has higher avoid than him, she has higher hit than him, she's faster than him, she has higher defense than him, she has higher res than him. The only thing he has over her is like maybe a few points of strength, which can be mitigated by the fact that she has Sandstorm by default. And it's easy to damage fix. You can run Lance Power, you can use Erica, use Lunar Brace, 
You can use gentility slash bravery for bravery damage. Uh, it's much harder to fix multiple things than it is to fix one thing. The only issue Tamara has is damage, if if that is considered to be an issue of hers. The only the issues he has, he has hit rate issues, he has speed issues, he has damage issues as well. Even on Lance Power, or I'm sorry, on Axe Power Three, he's barely able to kill things, if at all. Like this is a crit build that needs axe power and it still doesn't work that well. Like this is like maybe a B tier build for the end game, A tier otherwise. Whereas her Roy build was out tanking his Ike build. And that's bad. Ike should out tank Roy. Ike gives you resolve plus for free, which is plus seven defense and res, and it also has damage. He should be substantially more tankier than like substantially more tanky than she is. But he's not. And if she runs Ike, she's like virtually unkillable when used correctly. So Huge difference in unit, you know, performance. This is how I evaluate units. I don't care about what they look like. I go by the results, right? I only care about the results. So if the unit performs, I run the unit, I rate the unit highly. If the unit doesn't perform, then it gets rated lowly. Now, is there a way to boost him up to do better in this end game? Probably, but it's gonna require external help. So he's probably gonna need speed boosted from another ally. Like maybe you have a Byleth that speed boosts or Rally Spectrum if you're running DLC to speed boost him. Maybe you use a Tonic and then you Rally Spectrum him, which is an external source of plus five speed just to get him to do something another unit can do without those resources. But then if you hand her those resources, like if I Rally Spectrum her and give her a speed Tonic, she would be 39 speed, which would double it would already double these. It would barely not double those, but it's it's close to the benchmark of doubling these. Actually, hold on. I think if she switches... Yeah, if she switches to Fenslar, she can double one of them. So if you give her speed plus five from, you know, speed tonic and then rally spectrum, she would be able to double this, which pushes up her chance to one round. And she'd put it at... So he's 25 defense. On Fenslar, she is 42. So she would... Put him to like half, and if she sandstorms, it would kill. So that's, that's you know, that's substantial. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. I just wanted to talk about unit performance, how I evaluate units, and some pitfalls I see when discussing units personally. I think the main thing is some people just look at stats, and like the base stats, the growths, and like Oife bot results, and then think that because the stats are kind of similar, that tells the whole picture, but that's not the case. Uh, you can have similar stat units to some degree like they'll, they'll they usually will analyze based on like a few points of like you know oh he has higher strength than her and his defense isn't that much lower his res isn't that much lower it's like yeah but if you're tanking five things having five more defense is 25 damage like having five more res if you're getting attacked by three mages is 15 more damage you're taking like that's these are these are substantial values these are non-trivial numbers like this is this is like a big deal for tanks like if you're a tank you want speed high defense and high res and picket like if other like if kagetsu could go on picket he would definitely be better than tamara as a tank but he can't she's the only character who can go on picket and she's the only character who can make use of this crazy passive like when this defense gets up 150 percent of defense instead of strength name me a unit that hits with 60 strength because like when her resolve, like even on this build, uh, when her resolve triggers, she's 38 defense. If we just round it up to 40, 150 of 1.5 times 40 is 60. So she's hitting with 60 strength. <laughs> and this isn't even a high defense build. This is like an above average defense build for her, where some of the Draco shields were used on another tank. So imagine how hard she can hit with like 50 or 45 defense. Like with 50 defense, she's hitting with virtually 75 strength. That's that's what the calculation would end up being. There isn't a unit who hits 75 strength without breaking the game through DLC or over leveling post game or something. Like it's absolutely crazy how strong Sandstorm is. And even if it's only a 30% chance, when you double, it's like a 50% chance you Sandstorm at least once. So every other combat, you should see a Sandstorm basically. If you're enemy phasing like 10 things, you'll see at least four to six sandstorms at 30 decks which is lower than what her deck should be in endgame uh, which you can easily get it up to like 35 to 40. so yeah all right so that's it for this one just wanted to talk about 
and show how I evaluate units, what I'm looking for, all the things that matter. Also consider that like Diamant and Tamara don't have weaknesses. So like for flyers, like flying tanks, obviously there's bonded shield for flying tanks, but if you want to make a unit like an Ike tank, they can just move in and attack things on its own, which can be valuable depending on the run you're doing, or if you just want to make space for your team. Uh, very few things can do it very well. I would say a, only a handful of units can make good Ike tanks and other units that use Ike don't use him to his like potential and you can still run these units and still benefit from the tankiness Ike provides but they're not going to be enemy phasing multiple things and they're not going to be putting in the work that the best Ike tanks can put in. Uh, so yeah, thanks for checking this out. Peace.